LAN media. In this video, I'm going to talk about Ethernet LAN media and let me first review the Ethernet history. You know that in 1980, Digital Equipment Corporation or DEC and Intel and Xerox published the DIX version 1.0 standard which boosted the speed of Ethernet to 10 megabit per second while maintaining Ethernet's thick trunk cabling scheme. In 1982, the DIX version 2.0 standard was released and is now commonly referred to as Ethernet 2. In 1985, the IEEE 802.3 committee published the IEEE 802.3 carrier sense multiple access with collision detection or CSMA CD access method and physical layer specification. This technology is called 802.3 CSMA CD and not Ethernet. However, it is frequently referred to as Ethernet even though the frame definition differs from DIX version 2.0. Although 802.3 and DIX frames can coexist on the same cable, interoperability is not assured. Therefore, when discussing Ethernet, it is necessary to distinguish between 802.3 frame and DIX version 2.0 frame. Here you can see in the top picture DIX version 2 frame preamble destination address source address type data and FCS and here we can see IEEE 802.3 frame preamble SOF or a start of frame delimiter and then destination address source address links 802.2 header and data and FCS the IEEE introduced the IEEE 802.3U1995 standard to provide Ethernet speed of 100 megabit per second over UTP and also fiber cabling. Actually, Fast Ethernet is the name of the extension to 100 megabit per second Ethernet network. This is the IEEE 802.3U working group. This uh, that is at the origin. Access technology or access technique is the same as in Ethernet version 10 megabit per second but at a speed multiplied by 10. Also transported frames are identical. And then this increase in speed may conflict with the wiring system and the possibility or not there such important transit uh, flows. This is why three sub-standards have been proposed for the 100 megabit per second. As you can see here, we have 100 base X, include 100 base TX and 100 base FX and also 100 base T4. I will explain them a little more uh, about them. Uh, for example, 100 base TX IEEE 802.3, okay, the first standard here, as you can see, this requires two pair of unshielded twisted pair or UTP category 5 or a two shielded pair or STP actually, okay, you can use STP or UTP cable and only two pair from four pair will use. And also about the IEEE 802.3 100 base T4, this requires four pair of a UTP category 3 or 4 or 5. Okay, for example, here let me to write about the 100 base TX, we can use CAT5 or CAT6. Okay, means uh, only we need to two pair of CAT5 or CAT6 cable. But if you want to, uh, for example, not upgrade the cabling, you can use 100 base T4. And again, you can use CAT3, 4, 5, 6. But you know that here, we because we want to use CAT3 or CAT4, we need four pair, all of the wires that we have in the twisted pair. A cable. Actually, IEEE 802.300 base T4 requires four pair of UTP category 3, 4, or 5, or maybe 6. And after that, here you can see we have 100 base FX. F means fiber. 100 base FX requires two optical fiber. Let me to explain a little more about the detail of these standards. First, uh, about the 100 base TX. About the 100 base TX, this uses 
two pairs of category 5 unshielded twisted pair UTP or two pair of shielded twisted pair STP cables or maybe category uh, for example 6 to connect the station to the switch or hub. One pair is used to carry frame from the station from the host to the switch and the other to carry frame from the switch to the station. Okay, and the distance between the switch and the station should be less than 100 meters. You know that we should use RJ45 or register jack 45 connector for the 100 base ticks because I'm, I, I'm sure that you use this type of standard. About the coding, we use 4B slash 5B block coding to provide bit synchronization in the 100 base ticks. Also, the encoding and decoding is implemented in two steps, as shown in the figure here. As you can see, we have, uh, for example, a 4B, 5B encoder. And actually, and here we have, again, 4B, 5B encoder. We encode, and after that, we decode. The detail of this is not important for us, but it is recommended to remember that in the 100 base TX, we use 4b slash 5b block coding now let me to explain about the, the next category about the next category this is 100 base t4 it uses four pair of category 3 4 5 or 6 but in most cases we use category 3 or cat 3 cable because we don't want to upgrade the cables after that two of the four pair are bi-directional and the two other two are unidirectional here you can see two of the four pair are bi-directional and two of them are unidirectional after that in each direction three pairs okay are used at the same time to carry data as shown in the figure here you can see that uh, we have four pair for example assume that we want to send data the pair two and pair three can work in the right direction and also the pair one actually the three of them are work in in one direction and another in a uh, other direction actually we can say three pairs are used for transmission and the fourth pair is used for collision uh, detection okay encoding decoding in 100 base t4 is more uh, complicated here as you can see we use 8b okay 6t encoding the detail is not important for us but actually it means that we have eight binary and uh, six ternary encoding scheme actually as this implementation uses category 3 utp each twisted pair cannot easily handle more than 25 megabaud as one pair switched between sending and receiving three pairs of utp at category 3 can handle only 75 megabaud and uh, thus it requires an encoding scheme that converts 100 megabit per second to a 75 megabaud signal here we have some detail that are beyond the uh, scope of our course let me to review the 100 base t4 it uses four pair of category in most cases three and or if you want you can use other categories two of the four pairs are bi-directional and the other two are unidirectional in each direction three pairs are used at the same time to carry data and then no separate transmission and receive pairs are present so full duplex operation is not a uh, possible and after that uh, three pairs are used for transmission and the four pairs is used for collision detection and 8b60 coding is used now let me to talk about the 100 base fx in 100 base fx it uses two pairs of fiber optic cables one pair carries frame from the station to the switch and the other from switch to a station and the distance between the station and the switch should be less than 2000 meters it makes use of nrz-i encoding scheme but as NRZI has a bit synchronization problem for long sequence, 100 base FX uses 4B, 5B means by 4, uh, 4 binary, 5 binary block encoding that increase the bit rate from 100 to 125 megabit per second. And here you can see the encoding it operates over two strands of multi-mode or single mode fiber 
cabling and about the connector it uses media interface con uh, connector like this connector uh, a step and twist or st connector a straight trip a straight tip and then a step and click or a straight connection fiber connection uh, defined for fiber distributed data interface or ftdi and also a 10 base fx network actually we can use mic st or sc connectors because of that now we know about different categories uh, categories of the fast ethernet 100 base x and 100 base t4 100 base x include 100 base tx over the copper cable and 100 base fx over the fiber optic cable but let me to emphasize that the most implemented cable between these three categories are the 100 base tx today's maybe we use higher speed but in the days that we used fast ethernet 100 base tx with rj45 connector uh, was the most implemented category of fast ethernet all right now let me to explain the collision delay in ethernet and also in the fast ethernet you know that in ethernet means 10 base t we use 10 megabit per second of the for example data rate and it means that in one bit okay can be sent in the uh, for example 0 0.1 microsecond let me to explain it look at here when you say i'm using the 10 megabit per second it means that we can send one uh, we can send 10 megabit okay on only one second actually we can send 10 megabit in one second because of that we understand that here in uh, for one bit we need only 0 0.1 microsecond it is obvious okay and also in the fast ethernet in the 100 base t or tx for example it means that we have 100 megabit per second of data rate what does it mean it means that it means that uh, we can send 100 megabit in one second and because of that one bit can be sent in 0 0.01 microsecond it is obvious okay after that you know that when we send the uh, traffic from a pc over the media we should ensure that here we don't have a collision how we can understand we don't have collision when you send data over the media okay you should like uh, for example uh, take some feedback from the line if the sending traffic and receiving traffic are same it means that we don't have collision okay you know that the minimum size of the ethernet frame is 64 bytes 64 byte equal to the 512 bit what does it mean it means that because in fast ethernet for one bit we need only 0 0.01 microsecond uh, time to send okay for 512 bit okay we need 5.12 microsecond look at here 0 0.01 microsecond for one bit for 512 bit we need 5. Point, okay 12 microsecond but in ethernet okay uh, for the uh, 512 bit we need more time actually the collision delay uh, or the time that takes that we discover the collision okay in the fast ethernet is five microsecond okay about five microsecond but in the ethernet means 10 megabit per second ethernet is the uh, for example 51 microsecond the overriding design rule design rule for 100 megabit per second ethernet network is that the round trip collision delay must not exceed uh, for example this time it is so important all right now let me to introduce gigabit ethernet or ieee 802.3 or ieee 802.3 ab let me to explain it you know that gigabit ethernet or gbe or one gig okay is the term applied to transmitting ethernet frame at a rate of a gigabit per second okay gigabit ethernet a transmission technology based on the ethernet frame format and protocol used in local area networks or lands 
provides a data rate of 1 billion bits per second or 1 gigabit. Okay, gigabit Ethernet is defined in the Institute of Electrical and Ele Electronics Engineer or IEEE 802.3 standard and is currently being used as the backbone in many enterprise networks. The initial standard for gigabit Ethernet was produced by the IEEE in June 1998 as IEEE 802.3 the 3z and required optical fiber actually in 80 to the 3z we need to use optical fiber and also coaxial cable okay 80 to the 3z is commonly referred to as a thousand base x where x refers to either cx sx lx or non-standard zx here you can see a uh, thousand base cx thousand base lx thousand base ASICs, but we have non-standard version 1000 base ZX, okay? And then IEEE 802.3 AB ratified in 1999 defines gigabit Ethernet transmission over unshielded twisted pair or UTP category 5E or 6 cabling and became known as 1000 base T as you can see here, okay? With the ratification of IEEE 802.3 AB, gigabit Ethernet become, became a the desktop technology as organization could use their existing copper cabling infrastructure. The IEEE 802.3z standard specified the operation of gigabit Ethernet over fiber and coaxial cable and introduced the gigabit media independent interface or a GMII okay what is the GMII let me to explain it a little more the media uh, independent interface was originally defined as a standard interface to connect a fast Ethernet okay Mac layer Mac block to, to a physical chip but here in the gigabit Ethernet the gigabit media independent interface is standardized by IEEE 802.3u and connects different type of physical layers to max being media independent means that different types of physical devices for connecting to different media a twisted pair fiber opt optic and etc can be used without redesigning or replacing the mac hardware thus any mac be can be used with any physical independent of the network signal transmission media this is beyond the scope of our course but here as you can see now, we know about the different versions of the Gigabit Ethernet. IEEE 803Z in 1998 released and IEEE 803AB in 1999 was released. Okay, The difference is that in the IEEE 803Z, we use fiber optic and also the coaxial cable, in most cases fiber optic. But in IEEE 803AB, we use the twisted pair cable actually. And here we can see about the IEEE 803Z, we have three versions, 1000 base 6, 1000 base LX, 1000 base S6. I will explain a little more about them. And after that, about the 1000 base T, we have the, uh, for example, 1000 base T, and this is the IEEE 803A. B. Now, let me to explain a little more about the 1000 base 6, 1000 base LX, and 1000 base A6, and after that, 1000 base T. First, let me to explain 1000 base 6 gigabit Ethernet over a coaxial cable. 1000 base 6 is a type of standard for implementing gigabit Ethernet networks. The 6 in 1000 base 6 stands for short hole co uh, copper and it indicates that this version of gigabit Ethernet is intended for short cable runs over copper cabling. 1000 base 6 technologies are in the beginning stage of being widely implemented in enterprise level network and are primarily used for collapsed backbone and high speed interconnects within wiring closets and equipment rooms. Actually, 1000 base 6 is an extension of standard Ethernet technologies to gigabit level network speeds. 1000 base 6 is normally implemented using shielded twisted pair or STP cabling or some type of coaxial 
cabling cable segment have a maximum length of only 25 meter only 25 meter okay thousand base six employs 8b 10b coding with serial transmission rate of 1.25 gigabit per second stp cabling is a standard 150 oh balanced cabling and should have a quality slightly better than the uh, for example ibm type 1 cabling thousand base 6 is intended mainly for connecting high speed hubs ethernet switches and rotors together in wiring closets common implementation for thousand base 6 are in switch to switch and switch to server connections with switch to server connections being the most frequently implemented use of the 1000 base 6 let me to review it is used on short run copper it runs over a pair of 150 ohm balanced coaxial cable and after that the maximum length is 25 meter it is mainly for server connection it uses 8b 10b encoding with simple nrc but let me to emphasize that in most cases you you don't use this standard these standards rarely use in the network let me to explain the next thousand base model thousand base sx means short wavelength gigabit ethernet is a type of a standard for implementing gigabit ethernet networks the sx in a thousand base sx stands for short at, and it indicate that this version of gigabit ethernet is intended for use with short wavelength transmissions over short cable runs of uh, fiber optic cabling okay thousand base s6 te technologies are in the beginning stage of being widely implemented in enterprise level network and are primarily used for shorter cable runs between pieces of equipment within a building how it works thousand base s6 is an extension of a standard ethernet technologies to gigabit level network speed and thousand base s6 is implemented using only multi-mode fiber optic cabling Cable segment length depends on the cable grade used and it means that for example if you use 50 um, micron multimode fiber you will have about 550 meter of extension and if you use uh, for example the diameter of 62.5 micrometer okay you will have only 260 meter of extension actually we can we can't use the uh, SM, uh, the multimode fiber for long distances because here we use the short wavelength and with multi-mode fiber you can reach only to uh, for example a, a smaller extension after that thousand base a6 is intended mainly for connecting high speed hops ethernet switches, and rotors together in different wiring closets or building using long cables wrong okay thousand base a6 is most commonly implemented in a switch to switch a configuration and when multi-mode fiber optic cabling is used in thousand, thousand base a6 implementation a condition called differential mode delay or dmd can sometimes occur this condition occurs only in cabling of uneven quality and it leads to signal jitter that can disrupt network communication to resolve this problem newer thousand base a6 transceivers condition the signal to distribute its power equally among all transmission modes of the uh, cables let me to review thousand base a6 is a fiber optic gigabit ethernet standards for operation over multi-mode fiber using a, a, for example 850 nanometer of the wavelength and uh, the standard specify a distance capability between 200 uh, or 220 meter and 550 meter in practice with, with good quality fiber optics and terminators thousand base a6 will usually work over significant uh, significantly longer distances this standard is highly popular for intra building links in large office building collocation facilities and a carrier neutral internet exchange thousand base a6 sfp works at uh, 815 nanometer wavelength and used only for the uh, pr uh, purposed of the multi-mode 
optical fiber with an LC uh, connector. Also, it uses 8B, 10B encoding with simple NRZ. The next standard is 1000 base elix, it means long wavelength gigabit Ethernet. Actually, the 1000 base elix is a type of standards for implementing gigabit Ethernet network. The elix in 1000 base elix stands for long and it indicates that this version of gigabit Ethernet is intended for use with long wavelength transmission over long cable runs of fiber optic cabling. Gigabit Ethernet standards are units you know, that are defined in the A8.3Z uh, standards, okay? And when we talk about the 1000 base elix, it means that 1000 base elix is an extension of standard Ethernet technologies to gigabit level network speeds. And 1000 base elix is implemented using either single mode fiber optic cabling or multi mode fiber optic cabling. And uh, cable segment length depends on the cable grade used here. For example, if you use single mode fiber, the maximum segment length will Will be 5000 meter up to 5000 meters or 5 kilometers okay when we use the cable grade with the 50 micron multi-mode fiber we will have 550 meters of maximum segment lengths and when we use again 62.5 micron multi-mode fiber we will have for example 440 meter thousand base elix is intended mainly for connecting high speed hubs ethernet switches and rotors together in different wiring closets or building using long cabling runs and 1000 base elix is most commonly implemented in a switch to switch configuration again here we have the uh, similar feature that we had before for example uh, in the um, 1000 base SX, it uses again 8B 10B encoding with simple NRZ and as I mentioned before, it uses long wavelength. Long wavelength means 1300 nanometer. You know that we have three types of wavelength, of short, long, and extra long. Short means 850 nanometer. Long means 1300 nanometer. And the extra long means 1550 nanometer. And as you can see, in the long wavelength, we have the, for example, 1300 nanometer and it can be used as i mentioned before with multiple mode or single mode uh, fibers in single mode fibers we can have the diameter between 8 micron and 9 uh, for example micrometer if you use 9 micrometer you will have 5 kilometer of uh, the uh, cable segment uh, or the uh, length of segment but if you use 8 micrometer you will have more than this maybe uh, for example up to uh, 10 or 20 or more than this about the maximum segment lengths now let me to talk about the 1000 base T gigabit Ethernet over UTP. You know that 1000 base T is a type of standard for implementing gigabit Ethernet network. The T in 1000 base T identifies it is an extension of the traditional 10 base T and also 100 base T Ethernet technologies for transmission over copper uh, unshielded twisted pair or UTP cabling. Actually, gigabit Ethernet standards are defined in the 802.3z and 802.3ab standard for project 802 developed by the IEEE. 1000 base T technologies are in the beginning stage of being widely implemented in enterprise level networks and they are primarily used for short and high speed interconnects uh, with the, uh, for example, wiring closets and for connecting high speed workstation to wiring closets. How 1000 base T work? Let me to explain it. About the 1000 base T, it is an extension of standard Ethernet technologies to gigabit level network speeds. 1000 base T is normally implemented using the commonly installed category 5 cabling or enhanced category 5 cabling version of UTP cabling. 1000 base T uses all four pairs of wi uh, wires in a standard UTP cabling as opposed to the uh, two pair of wires used in 10 base T and also 100 base T networks. Using 
all four pairs of UTP cabling has certain associated problems because of uh, the attenuation, a crosstalk, and echoes arising from full duplex transmission over single wires. The 802.3ab standards specify special filters for hybrid circuits using in full duplex transmission over single wires. A special five-level pulse amplitude a modulation or PAM encoding a mechanism instead of binary signals. Forward error correction techniques and pulse shaping techniques or technologies to make thousand base T a function and reliable networking technology. Cable segments for thousand base T have a maximum length of hundred meters and thousand base T is intended mainly for connection high speed hops, Ethernet switches and rotors together in wiring closets. For switch to switch connection in backbone and for switch to server connection and for horizontal cable runs to high speed workstations. Thousand base T can be used in data centers for fast server switching or in desktop PCs for broadband applications. The biggest advantage of thousand base T is that it can use existing uh, copper cabling, negating the need to rewrite the system with newer, or for example, optical fiber uh, cables. Because of that, let me to review the thousand base T. It uses CAT5 for pair cable or higher, CAT5E or a CAT6. The maximum length is 100 meter. The encoding defined is a five level coding scheme and one byte is sent over the four pairs at 1250 megahertz. And it is now included in the IEEE 803 2002. This is the newer version for the, the IEEE 803 AB that released in the 1999. And this standard uses the four pairs in this cable. Now, let me to compare all of this four gigabit Ethernet technology with each other. As you can see, this table provides an overview of gigabit Ethernet scalability constraints. As you can see here, we have four type of standard, 1000 base T, 1000 base LX, 1000 base SX, and 1000 base 6. Let me first uh, verify and compare the speed. All of them are uh, using the, uh, the 1000 megabit per second of speed because of that we can say all of them are under the category of the gigabit Ethernet technology. About the maximum segment length, 1000 base T because it uses the UTP cable has the maximum uh, segment length of the 100 meter about the 1000 base SX if you use the uh, for example MMF or multi-mode fiber with the 50 uh, micrometer of diameter you will you will have 500 meter of uh, the uh, segment length or maximum segment length but if you use the 62.5 micrometer multi-mode fiber you will have uh, only 220 meter of the maximum segment length but in the long wavelength or in the thousand base lx okay because it has the uh, higher wavelengths uh, 1310 in the multi-mode fiber with the uh, for, uh, for example diameter of maybe 50 micron okay we will have 550 meter again for the length of the segment but if you use single mode fiber for example maybe you have up to nine kilometer of the maximum segment length and finally about the thousand base cx it has only 25 meter of the maximum segment length about the encoding in thousand base t we use five level in thousand base lx we use 8b 10b in 1000 base a6 again we use 8b 10b and finally in 1000 base 6 we use 8b 10b of the encoding decoding scheme and after that about the media in the 1000 base t we use cat5 or cat5e or cat6 cable or utp unshielded twisted pair or maybe stp after that in 1000 base sx we use only mmf or multi-mode fiber but in the lx you can use both a uh, multi-mode fiber and also single mode fiber and finally for 1000 base 6 we use a special stp or a special shielded balanced copper 
you know that in gigabit ethernet the frame format remains same and also the frame size and it is still uses csma cd and as with ethernet and uh, like the ethernet and also fast ethernet full duplex operation is possible okay and difference appear in the encoding in the physical layer actually you know that ethernet works in the layer one and layer two about the layer two characteristics we don't have any difference between the ethernet fast ethernet gigabit ethernet or maybe higher versions but in, in the layer one about the encoding about the physical features we have difference between the different ethernet uh, for example technologies like the ethernet fast ethernet gigabit ethernet or uh, other other versions now let me to explain a little about the 10 gigabit ethernet or ieee 802.3 ae released in 2002 for 10G over fiber optic and also I3P8O3AN released in 2006 for 10G over the uh, copper cable actually 10 gigabit ethernet or 10 GE or 10 GBE okay is a group of computer networking technologies for transmitting ethernet frame at a rate of 10 gigabits per second it was first defined by the IEEE 803AE in 2002, okay, standard. Unlike previous Ethernet standards, 10 gigabit Ethernet defines only full duplex point-to-point -point links, which are generally connected by network switched. And uh, shared medium CSMA CD operation has not been carried over uh, from the previous generation Ethernet standards. So half duplex operation and repeater hubs do not exist in 10 GB okay the 10 gigabit ethernet standard encompasses a number of different physical layer or PHY standards a networking device such as a switch or a network interface controller may have different physical types through pluggable physical modules such as those based on SFP plus, plus like the SFP that here you can see like previous version of ethernet 10 GB can use either copper or fiber cabling okay and maximum distance over copper cable is 100 meters but because of its bandwidth requirement higher grade cables are required the adoption of 10 gigabit ethernet has been more gradual than previous revisions of ethernet in 2007 1 million 10 gb ports were shipped in 2009 2 million ports were shipped and in, thousand, in 2010, over 3 million ports were shipped, with an estimated 9 million ports in 2011. As of 2012, although the price per gigabit of a bandwidth for 10 gigabit Ethernet was about one third compared to gigabit Ethernet, the price per port of 10 gigabit Ethernet is still hindered more widespread adoption. In this table, we can see different 10 gigabit Ethernet media types. You know that they are different about the multi-mode fiber and also single mode fiber media and also about the encoding. Let me to review some of them. For example, as you can see here, we have 10 G base SR. This is the SFP of 10 or SFP plus of a 10 G base SR. S means the short wavelength. Okay, means about 850 nanometer as you can see the distance of this standard is up to 300 meter and here we use mmf or multi-mode fiber in most cases with 50 or maybe 62.5 uh, micrometer of diameter after that about the encoding here we use 66 um, binary encoding after that here as you can see we have 10 g base sw again here we have short wavelength here we have some detail for example sr in uh, use in the lan and sw use in the van but here it, i'm not going to explain all of this all of this detail as you can see 10 g base sw short wavelength mmf and again the distance is 100 300 meter but here as you can see uses the van interface sub layer or wis
About the 10 G base LR or LW, both of them are both of them use the long wavelength about 1300 or 1310 nanometer of wavelength. Okay, uh, we can use them on the SMF or single mode fiber with eight or nine micrometer of diameter. As you can see, the distance is 10 kilometer, and also it can be more than this. Again, LR means long wavelength in the LAN and LW means long wavelength in the van and about the LR uses 66 B encoding for a dark fiber use and here uh, about the LW we use WIS it's not important to remember all of this detail only you should uh, inform about them after that here you can see 10 G base ER and EW E means extra long okay extra long means 1515 nanometer of wavelength okay again here we have extra long wavelength SMF and also here we should have extra long uh, wavelength here it is the SMF not SNMP okay and after that as you can see up to 40 kilometer we can use them with the same encoding that I was explained before and after that here we have some other uh, media type 10 G base LX4 10 G base 6 4 both of them are uh, for example the first about the LX here we can use SMF or MMF with the 8B 10B encoding and in the 6 4 4 pair of uh, for example copper cable STP cable and here it uh, it can be useful for, um, up to to 15 meter uh, in the IEEE 8038K this released and after that 10 G base T CAT 6A UTP 100 meter IEEE 8038N and after that 10 G base ZR long wave SMF up to 80 kilometer we can use it and then a 10 G base PR passive optical network 20 kilometer with the uh, for example 10 G E PAN 8 or the 3 AV don't forget we should only inform about these standards we don't want to remember all of the uh, for example detail here also let me to say that here as you can see we have van interface sublayer or wis the wis is used to interoperate with synchronous optical network or sonet sts 192c transmission format because of that maybe uh, you encounter with these terms when you want to select the media type all right now let me to explain a little about the 40 and also 100 gigabit ethernet under the ieee 802.3 ba you know that 40 gigabit ethernet or 40 g and also 100 gigabit ethernet or 100 g are groups of computer networking technologies for transmitting ethernet frame at rate of 40 and 100 gigabit per second respectively these technologies offer significantly higher speed than 10 gigabit ethernet the technology was first defined by the ieee 8 to the 3ba in 2010 standard and later by the ieee 2802 3 bg in 2011 and after that ieee 802 3 bj in 2014 and then ieee 802 3 bm in 2015 and finally in the IEEE 8023 CD in 2080. You know that with 10 gigabit Ethernet links extending further toward the access layer, even higher bandwidth is needed to aggregate traffic in the distribution and core layers as well as in the data center. Some catalyst switches now offer 40 gigabit Ethernet and also 100 gigabit Ethernet capabilities. In this table, we can see some of the 40 gigabit Ethernet and also 100 gigabit Ethernet physical standards.